Hey my YouTube people, how are you doing today? Today is a special little day, uh, Drone Poison here. Gonna be taking you guys through a walkthrough of this Volador V2 frame from Flyfish RC. They went ahead and kindly uh, sent me this out along with some 2406 motors, 1950 KV. So we're gonna put them to the test and uh, see how they hold up. Basically, I uh, I bought the, the V1 and I built it and well, I put the frame together, built and got printed all the TPU and everything, but I noticed that they came out with a V2. So I reached out and asked them if they'd be willing to uh, send me out one to review. And to my surprise, they actually agreed. So this is the start of something new. The Volador from Flyfish RC seems to be everywhere right now and they're really supportive of the community. So I'm gonna give it a shot and we're gonna see what happens. Hopefully, um, I'm wild, you know. I like running big KV motors, uh, big fat, you know, 2408s, 2408.5s, 2200KV, something wild like that. They didn't quite have my flavor of wild that I wanted, but the closest thing was a 2406-1950KV. So that's what we're gonna be checking out today. Uh, these bad boys right here. Oh yeah, they're pretty. I really, I seen them on the site and I just thought that they uh, they looked good and they were close to what I needed. They look like they're quality. Um, I went out and flew with a couple cats uh, just the other day up in Pasadena. Shout out to Wyatt Humphreys and Finley FPV. Uh, and Wyatt is a big fan of fly fish and the flashes. He says he has yet to break a motor and I've been seeing the stuff that they're flying and uh, I got a chance to go out there and hang out and rip with them. And they're the real deal. I mean, they, they I broke two, two, two quads while I was out there flying with them. I had a blast. So I was looking over this and I kind of wanted to just talk about what's actually in the box here. We got some, some uh, wire protectors that they gave us kindly. So we got four of those. They also come with the TPU. So, oh, okay. This is cool. So we got the side, the side TPUs. This is for the bottom. In between the, the mid and bottom plate, basically. And this will hold your crossfire antenna. I actually did a modified version of this that was wider right here to actually hold uh, ELRS so that's pretty cool we got that and these are the standoff little caps that go off on your standoff so it comes with all the TPU you got your your front bumper and I just dropped another one of those little standoff caps and your rear mount it comes set up for GPS as well. You can put your GPS module in there or not. It looks like uh, I'm not exactly sure if it just I have to look further, but basically it looks like it can come in here and you can adjust the angle of it as well, possibly. I'm not quite sure about that. That's pretty pretty awesome though that it comes with GPS mount as well. I printed all my own, so I probably won't be using theirs just depending on uh, how I have the V1 so I had all the parts for the V1 that I originally printed up I printed a custom uh, mini 11 mount as well if you guys are interested in any of my my mounts and stuff like that when you see the finished product uh, you can just hit me up in the, the comments and I will be happy to send you my SDO files um, and then it looks like they also have the regular without the GPS Man, they about did themselves, even the TPU. I mean, not, not too many companies send you all the TPU, and the TPU looks glorious. Looks flawless, pretty dang, pretty dang nice. I mean, just as good as if I was gonna print it, if not a little bit better. My prints are pretty good, but these are flawless. And I guess these are a new style that lock on to the actual arms. We'll see how those work out. Um, the other ones were were uh, a little bit more more protection as far as all the way around. Um, and 
my thing is, is I like motor protection and I run the bigger motors, so I'm not for sure how these are going to work out for me. And as far as, uh, basically if I'm going to do something different or not, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not for sure yet. Basically you got your standoffs, all your, your gear, you got silicone spacers, I think right here for your cameras, for your, yeah. So they got silicone vibration dampeners. I know there was an issue with the original one that they were talking about that you were getting jello in your, your O3 setup. So they had made some custom ones. Well, they, it looks like they apparently have fixed that issue here. Got all your hardware. You got your XT60 right here, plug in. And uh, yeah, I think this thing now, from what I've heard, is that they, they've made it where it's, it can go in either way versus only being able to go in one way. Um, I know there's a few other new things that they've done to it as well. Uh, I can put a list right here for you and you guys can see that list of all the differences between the V1 and V2. I know that they made the fly fish sticker actually more sticky so it's supposed to be a little better and I heard they used some new straps these ones that I got, they kind of look like the same straps at the at the moment. I'm not for sure if those are different or not. I need to actually look at the other ones. And basically you got all your carbon. And I know that they, they put a little, little key lock in the bottom for the arms right now. So that you got, got a lock for the arms interlock some a little bit tighter basically got your arms these arms pretty epic the carbon looks pretty clean nice thick and beefy right here I like how it tapers you know pretty decent it looks like six mil <laughs> that's some beefy arms man six mil oh yeah the skinniest portion is a uh, eight eight point eight mil and the wider portion that is roughly right the first screw is roughly 16 mil so normally this is the spot that you always break is right here on an arm and they have beefed it up to 16 mil so i'm pretty happy to see that and six mil thick is is just awesome so this thing is pretty pretty the integrity of it looks like it's going to be pretty durable and I I spoke with Wyatt Humphreys and he hasn't broken a thing on it he's very happy with it uh, anyways those are the arms let's see this this is the I believe the mid plate slash bottom plate it's two two point five and then this is the actual like mid plate right here that was the bottom plate this is the mid plate and it's another 2.5 and then your top plate yeah it's going to be another it's close it's 2.5 little variances here and there but basically you got 2.5 top 2.5 mid 2.5 bottom she's she's going to be a little chunk you know and some big old six mil arms. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. So I had a locking key for the arms right here that, that pops in. And uh, some new camera side plates, I believe, as well. That go with the, the new... They changed up some stuff. And basically, hopefully, it's going to be better. We will see. I haven't really have anything to compare it to as I haven't flown the, the V1 yet or really put it through the paces but I'm skipping straight to the V2 so um, I'm hoping my TPU prints that I printed will all work on here uh, just the same I know the only thing that I didn't like about the V1 that I seen was on the XD60 the actual screws here were uh, uh, smaller than the standard uh, what they were 2.5 versus three uh, so yeah that was the only thing you have to use two sets of tools or two different tools to take the top plate off 
but I mean, it's not a deal breaker, you know, and I don't know if they change that or not. I need to double check, but man, these motors, these motors are epic. Look at that. I mean, they just, they scream quality, dude. We will see how they rip. I mean, if they are any, I've been running F80s for a while and I'm kind of like, really love the F80s, that high KV, that instant pop out. And I'm really hoping that these, I know they're not going to be F80s, but they're 2406 and they're 1950 KV. So I'm hoping that there's like a sweet spot where I get a little bit more flight time and still have really good pop. And on this build, um, I haven't quite decided yet if I'm gonna go with O3 air unit or I'm gonna stick with Vistas because that's what I've been rocking for a while. But I'm kind of wanting to ditch the the HD cam and just have a basher that I can push to the next level, not worry about breaking ND filters and cameras and GoPros and all that stuff. I mean. I pretty much go full bore anyway, but it gets costly sometimes, you know, when you're, when you're pushing to that next level, you're going to break stuff. And I just think that maybe this might be a way where I can have that same power, get a little bit longer flight time and still get that juicy footage. You know, I don't mind props and views, so it's not a big deal breaker for me, but, um, you know, it just, I think it's going to be a, a winning combination. Hopefully we'll see. Well, I went ahead and pieced this thing together and just wanted to point out a few of the obvious things that they have changed between the two builds. And first, there is some new aluminum washers that they're putting on the bottom for strengthening it. All right. They also changed the actual motor TPU protection uh, from the, this style right here to this style right here, which I don't like how this has the TPU, the TPU right between the, the motor screws. So I do like the new improved version. I just don't like the fact that there's not a lot of motor protection. Uh, there is out here, but if you hit here or here, you're going to be out of luck. So I would, I would like to see, you know, I know they're doing the best that they can with what they got, but I would like to see some more motor protection myself and I'll probably work on some uh, uh, SDL file myself for that. I also seen that they have changed out the camera side plate. Um, if you look at the the V1 versus the V2, they have notched this out right here. I know there was an issue with the O3 and people were reversing the camera plates flipping left for right, right for left and then they had a, a print that you could fit that was a fish that would fit in here to dampen the O3 from getting jello and working better with the gyro flow, the gyro that was in the camera. But what they've done is they've actually taken this little section right here and notched it out. And then what they what they've included is they've included two different sets of silicone rubber grommets for dampening. So you've got this is a set for the 20 mil cam and feels like there's the black is a little bit more rigid maybe uh, but there's two right they're two basically different colors and they fit into the side plate uh, I believe like so they fit right in there so you can have it dampened and it comes with uh, the setup for the 20 millimeter camera and it also comes for a 19 millimeter setup. So either which way you're going to be set. These guys, I mean, let me finish. I'll finish talking about the things that they changed. Uh, so like I said, um, basically they've changed up where you can, this XT60 can now fit either way. They've countersunk the screws here. Um, and they also countersunk here, but with my mount that I have, I actually use the button heads under here and I have clearance for them. And then I use like the quad Miller style countersunk uh, for this setup. 
And uh, what else did they change? They changed the camera mount, the ends, that, the aluminum. And I can't think of anything else right off hand. Um, oh, supposedly they did. They changed out the battery pad too. The battery pad was a. Uh, it was basically like recessed, countersunk in right here, and I guess people were saying it it wasn't sticky enough or something or another. So they they redesigned it. It's just a little bit different, and they also included extra sticky protector like or sticky uh, backing for it in case that one wears out. You can put another one on. Uh, and that's as far as I could tell what is different on it. What I can tell you is that these guys, Flyfish RC, I got to give them a big thumbs up because, man, these guys have thought of everything. They've got motor protection for you, right? Motor wire protection. They've got the TPU. This TPU I printed myself, but I mean, they it comes with everything. Everything that you can imagine they've got over here. They went ahead and thought of everything. They've got you set up for your DJI 03. They got the screws, right? They've got your screws for your regular DJI setup as well. Like if you're running a Vista or what have you, they got the screws for that as well, right? They got your screws right here. They've got everything. They've got spacers to space your setup. They got nuts, lock nuts. They've got everything man for your stack for your for your vista to lock them down and they're like metal they're not cheap plastic these guys have thought of just about everything and they've packaged up as much as possible i think for the cost of this frame the bang for your buck that you're gonna get is just unbelievable and then on top of it like even like all your motor screws um they come in the kit so you've got motor screws that fit with the carbon to their actual standard thickness that you're going to need for your motor so you ain't got no screws protruding out or whatnot and it's just an easy it's an easy uh build you know i mean it's a little bit more technical on the build side um if you're kind of intimidated but there's great instructions and great tutorials online for putting this frame together it's really not hard. It's kind of looks intimidating when you pull all the stuff out. And a lot of it actually is just extras. I mean, if you see here, it's just freaking, there's just extras. They give you extra screws of everything. Every single, every single screw, you're going to get extras. Your shoulder bolt screws right here, you're going to get five extras. Uh, you just, they got TPU at the wazoo. You've got everything, you know, everything you need. Plus a GoPro mount. I mean, people these days are not doing this. So this is just above and beyond, and I'm, I'm impressed. The build quality of it, it's freaking locked together. I put it together, I, I put this one screw in, and they have a new keystone design that, that fits in there. It's like a little, it's like a little X, and it locks in. It, it makes the, the arms even more rigid, but just having that in there and this one screw, not even having the actual stack screw in between to pinch it tighter, um, or the other shoulders, the other shoulder screw right here, without even having that in, just that one screw locked in and all, both these out and putting it in there, there's like no give. It's just locked. Now you tighten this stack screw up, putting pressure pinching it, and then you also put the other the other shoulder bolt in. There the standoff bolt, whatever you want to call it, it goes into the arm. And these things are so solid. Six mil. I think that if this thing doesn't just kill motors because uh of the lack of motor protection that this is gonna just be straight awesome you know this could be something that i really think about swapping over to uh let's see how it does and we're not going to get too ahead of ourselves but i appreciate fly flyfish rc for sending this out and i hope you guys uh if you like what you see, that you hit that that subscribe button and give me a, a like, big fat thumbs up, and uh, share the video if you like. You know, I, I really need the help growing my channel, and I appreciate the opportunity for you, Flyfish, for hooking me up, and uh, I appreciate each and every one of my subs, and I just I I can't say thank you enough.
keep watching and uh, look out for the, the footage coming from this. I'm going to go ahead and finish building this out and then I will step back in and show you the finished build.